It's Al Cole from CBS Radio, and I want to tell you about a Renaissance woman who excels at everything she puts her innovative mind to. And you know, I'm going to start it out like this. What would you say if I told you that I was going to introduce you to a lady who is a very successful business entrepreneur and a world-class creative force as a realtor, interior designer, hosts charity golf tournaments for wildlife, and is the cutting-edge author of the stunning Magical Forces Within? Well, Al, I'd say make the introduction, brother. <laughs> I've just been dying to learn some of all of those things from somebody who sounds like a real magnetic lady. <laughs> well... You're in luck because not only can you learn about the fabulous life accomplishments of this woman, whose name happens to be Rhonda Grant, <laughs> but week in and week out, Rhonda will introduce you to some of the most exciting guests on the planet as she hosts her own awesome podcast, The Rhonda Grant Show, on Contact Talk Radio. Week to week, Rhonda skillfully weaves the magical forces within her with the extraordinary discoveries in the sometimes ordinary lives of her guests who blossom before your very eyes through the guidance and know-how of such a skilled and sensitive host as Rhonda Grant. you got to check it out. Check out all the action at RhondaGrantAuthor.com. That's RhondaGrantAuthor.com. Dot com to witness the extraordinary discoveries in otherwise ordinary lives. And I hear some of you asking right now, well, Al, how do you know all this? <laughs> I'll tell you. It's because I weave some of the same magic on my own nationally syndicated show called People of Distinction. It's all about humanity at its best. Every guest with extraordinary things to say about the magical forces within life itself. Get it? So check them out. The Rhonda Grant Show, Extraordinary Discoveries in Ordinary Lives, and People of Distinction, created by me, Al Cole from CBS Radio, now hosted by my amazing son, Benji Cole. You can check out People of Distinction on Apple Music or email me for exciting updates on my music and my books, too, especially Romance for Women on Amazon. Email me at al at alcoholic.com. You heard me right. That's A L at A-L-C-O-L-E-H-O-L-I-C dot com. And I really want to thank my CBS radio listeners for coming up with that handle. Al Cole Hollick. <laughs> Seems like from day one, my listeners have been saying, Al, we love what you're doing there, brother. In fact, we're hooked on it. We're Al Cole Hollick. So here we go in classic form with a swing of a golf club as she hosts another charity golf tournament for wildlife and another incomparable Rhonda Grant show. So all together, everybody, here's Rhonda. Thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Rhonda Grant show right now. And I have a lot of great guests on this show and I have a great guest coming up. If you've been searching for a deeper meaning in your life, Go to Amazon and pick up my book, Magical Forces Within. You know we're all ordinary people having extraordinary experiences, and we have a fantastic guest on the show today, Trish Tonai. Trish is an author, artist, founder, and host of ShareYourStories.online. Trish started painting at an early age, exploring watercolor, oil, and acrylics. Four years ago, she decided to hang a few pieces outdoors. Soon the work made their way into, into the garden, on benches, patios, fences, and balconies. They are best described as abstract florals to highlight the landscape of your personal space. In support of the entrepreneurial spirit, Trish is the founder of ShareYourStories.online, a marketing platform featuring business stories and sharing great ideas. She is the host for business mentorship, keeping it real. Live and unscripted interviews, introducing you to the person behind the logo and host a video library featuring international speakers with marketing workshops, invest in yourself. As a published artist, she has two books, Breaking Barriers, 10 Entrepreneurial Women Share Their Stories and A Diary of Change, 12 Personal Tools. With a love of writing, she has co-authored an e-magazine on wealth and well-being and is a contributor to Thrive Global and CanFit Pro magazine. Join us as she trades a pen for paintbrush with pure color, outdoor art, no watering required. We are going to find out about her extraordinary experiences. Hi, Trish, and welcome to the Rhonda Grant Show. 
Well, thank you, Rhonda. What an absolute thrill for me because uh, this is actually my first interview as transitioning from a pen to a paintbrush. Wonderful. That's good to know. Thank you for letting us know. And um, it wasn't too long ago that as a brand new author myself, uh, you interviewed me. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. You know what? It's it's wonderful how life takes us full circle, right? It's all about collaborating. And it's certainly my pleasure to uh, be featured on the Rhonda Grant Show. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. So what initially inspired you to become an entrepreneur or a serialpreneur, really? Yeah, <laughs> actually, you know, I started my first business in 1993. So I'm kind of dating myself there. But um, I actually started that business. Uh, I was in the uh, downsize market. I'm sure you can remember the time when the economy was not booming yes. and uh, folks were actually being downsized from their jobs. So when I was on the speaker circuit, I used to use the joke that, uh, you know, I'm so short because I was downsized twice before I was 30. So um, that was really the reason for being an entrepreneur. I just decided, you know, I kept getting all these great jobs and uh, but I was last in first out. So I thought, you know what, I've got to try my hat at this and see where it takes me. And uh, so that sort of started my journey. And here we are so many years later, uh, and I'm still an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of grit, though, or guts to leap from making a steady income to becoming an entrepreneur, right? It and sure so, does. Mm -hmm. And the uncertainty of the this, this sustainable paycheck uh, with the hopes of getting a big paycheck sometimes doesn't come for quite some time. What advice would you give to somebody right now who's listening and thinking that they want to become an entrepreneur, but they it's really, really hard to let go of uh, the job that they're in? You know, that's a really great point, because one of the things that I often share when folks ask me that question is um, to at least have six months of sustainable income in the bank. Because you're absolutely right. When you become an entrepreneur, it's a big leap of faith to go from a paycheck that you may receive weekly or biweekly, or in some folks' cases, once a month, um, to take that leap of faith into trying to find your own income base. So most folks actually start things as a side hustle. Now, I didn't really do that. I kind of uh, found myself in a downsized situation, and I just kind of took the bull by the horns and went for it. But when I'm giving advice to other folks, I usually say, try to have six months of sustainable income in the bank. And if you don't need it, that's awesome. Um, but if you do, then you have that little security blanket that can give you a little bit of confidence as you continue on that journey for entrepreneurship. Well, that's wonderful advice. And it's hard to, to get ahead like that because you also, a lot of people actually think that people who are in business for themselves are rich. Mm, very true. Very, very true. You know, um, you know, throughout our careers, we often help other people and um, we do some mentorship. And, you know, hence, I, I have sort of been that person because I was kind of looked upon as being a maverick in the female entrepreneurial world. There weren't right. any female entrepreneurs when I first started. No. And, I, you know, one of the things I can certainly say is that um, not only does it take a lot of courage, but it takes resiliency. And I think maybe when you truly believe in your business, your great idea, and you've had that light bulb moment, it's usually the gut instinct that says to you that you're ready to take that next step. And you know what, sometimes that takes years before people, you know, feel that now's the time, now's the right time. And so uh, I always tell folks, you know, you, you need to trust your gut instinct, and uh, because it will never steer you wrong. And if you feel that it's the right time, and it feels right, then you should go for it. Mm -hmm. And what is your advice about taking a partner on? You know, that's that's really interesting. Uh, one of the positions I had, uh, one of the great jobs that I had was working um, with folks who were in family businesses. And okay. lots of times, um, you know, first generation or second generation who was taking things over. And sometimes the second generation folks thought, well, maybe I need to get a business partner to sort of help me to offset some of the skills perhaps that I'm not that good at. And you know, it's um, it's a really interesting dynamic because you have to be very, very careful with the partners that you choose. Um, I think best, they're best if they're not friends or family. Um, exactly. Because then, you know, you can keep yeah. that, that professionalism and you can kind of say, I guess you have to, the, the secret to having a successful partnership 
is really being able to have an open line of communication. Because as you well know, things happen and you really have to be able to have a dialogue about what works and doesn't work. And one of the things I often implemented, um, you know, when I had a team of folks that were reporting to me is a Friday afternoon fireside chat. So, okay. you know, at three o'clock in the afternoon, everybody grabbed a coffee. Um, you know, we sat a pow out in somebody's office or in the boardroom and you kind of said, OK, how was your week? What were the challenges? What were the wins? And how can we help you next week overcome some of the things that may have been a challenge? And I think even when you're in a partnership situation as an entrepreneur, that's a really good idea to kind of have that touch point at least once a week with your partner to kind of say, OK, you know, where where did what things did we do really well this week and what things can we do better next week? Because at least it keeps the dialogue open and takes maybe a little bit of the personality outside of yes, the, right? You can mm -hmm. kind of say, um, you know, that worked really well. I really loved that. That was really fantastic. But yeah, that didn't make me feel so great. Or this was what happened when we didn't do that correctly. And uh, it's just basically opening those lines of communication so that you can keep the partnership thriving. Yes, um, because, you know, one of the things, I mean, one of the things that people do have a hard time with, I find still, is asking for help, yes. saying, you know, I'm just too loaded down, I really need help. And, um, and so that that sounds like that was a wonderful process that you had. Yeah, you know, it really works. And one of the other things, you know, I've been I've been talking to lots of folks like you um, on my show, and you know, we're all hearing lots of no's. I mean, we've just come through a situation yes. where we've had lots of rules, mm -hmm. and there's been more no's than there has been yeses. And I think people are still feeling a little inhibited to uh, collaborate because they're feeling apprehensive. And so when folks are hearing a lot of no's, I'm saying sometimes you just have to ask. You know, to, to your point, we, we get ourselves so bogged down in the minutiae of what we're doing that we forget that if we ask, you may hear a yes, and the yes may lead to something really amazing. Yes, that's right. But I think that uh, I, I've done some thinking on this because this has come up too uh, with what I'm doing is um, afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. And people are afraid to ask because they're afraid of the no. Right. And so they can get a lot of anxiety um, just working up to asking the question. And then they just don't even ask it because they're worried about the no. But sometimes that no that people get may help them on a different trajectory. And it may have them reevaluate what they're doing and say, it's not no now, but maybe if I uh, do something different or, you, you know, present myself better, I can get a yes. That is so true. And, uh, you know, I myself uh, have a mentor. So I, even after being in business as an entrepreneur for 30 years, and, and that's something really new that I've acquired. And I have a female mentor and I can't say nice. that I've ever had a female mentor before. And we were actually talking about this very thing when she had said, you know, you lean at least five to seven touch points with someone to build trust and relationship before you should actually present the ask. Okay. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. So, you know, you need either emails or newsletters or, you know, social media connections, um, some way in which to kind of introduce who you are and what you stand for before you can actually get to feel the confidence to make an ask of someone else. And I thought that was really great advice, especially during the times when we're feeling a little apprehensive and maybe a little bruised by our, our recent chain of events. Um, and so I've kept that in mind, you know, I think, okay, so how many times have I been in touch with Rhonda before I can say, do you want to participate in this? Or would you like to think about that? Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really great advice. I don't know how you feel about that, Rhonda. With that, you know, when you think about it, it kind of builds trust, right? Well, and it's how you phrase it and how right. you phrase is, is, is really well, um, and uh, yes, and I, I agree with everything that you've talked about. It's just amazing teaching for our listeners, for sure. Um, has the pandemic changed how you do business? Oh, for sure. That's an understatement. Um, yeah, I'm, a, yeah, I'm an entrepreneurial coach. And yes. so a lot of the entrepreneurs that I worked with found themselves in challenging times. And so um, one of the things that I've sort of been doing throughout most of my career as a stress reliever 
um, was leaning on my art and sort of drawing or sketching or painting. And so what I did during the pandemic is I made a huge emotional and mental pivot and I started really leaning into my artwork. And I have brought that hobby now from sort of the, the, to the forefront. And, you know, I've, I'm doing something very different. Um, I've been test marketing for four years. You know, there, I have had some successes in terms of some commission pieces over the last few years. And it was one of those things where I was kind of dabbling in it on the side. And now I've actually decided to really make a commitment to um, the creative side of my personality. And I've brought the artwork to the forefront with outdoor art. That's amazing. And I find that during the pandemic, a lot of people uh, went back to, uh, well, they had lots of time to think mm -hmm. about different things. And when you think about your bliss and what makes you happy, people go to those places, their art, whatever it is, writing, uh, painting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all those types of things. But uh, how many pieces uh do, of art do you have to have to um to showcase you know it's like, interesting it depends on the venue um i can certainly say that i've had some um you know some some events at my home in the backyard uh where okay. i had say 15 or 20 pieces and you know you invite people that you know because you're trying to get i call it get your legs you know you're trying to build your confidence because there's nothing worse than than being an artist and having somebody look at your stuff and and have a negative get a negative uh, criticism about it it kind of it it may take the wind out of yourselves when you first start so I can say that I've had some shows sort of in my own backyard um, I've been invited to showcase my work with other artists which is always nice because then you don't have to have so many pieces yeah if you're showcasing with other folks you kind of all complement one another and it gives you an opportunity to sort of shore up some other people. I always find it's really easier to be supportive of, of someone else's talent than it is to kind of put yourself out there in the forefront. So when you when I did some shows in conjunction with some other folks, that actually helped build my own confidence because, you know, I could I could talk about someone else's artwork and be very supportive and they sort of continued in kind, you know, they would be very supportive of your work. And it just helps to build that self-confidence so you can put yourself out there. Oh, yes, it sure does. It, it, being around other artists always helps you uh, mm -hmm. just to get into the, the frame of mind that they're in and uh, share share your art. I mean, I love right. doing that, too. Yeah, very true. And, you know, you find it with authors a lot, right? I mean, yes. we've both written books and uh, you, put, you put pen to paper and you kind of you, you write your book in isolation to a certain point, you know, oh, you yes. gather all your, right? You gather all your yeah. information, you get all your research, you've kind of, you've done your, your layout, um, you know, you've done your first edits probably on your own, and then you're ready to share that book with a friend or colleague to try to get their opinion on what they think of it or, or whether or not, you know, they'd like to do some editing for you. And so I guess it's that, that creative spirit, right? We, we look to like-minded individuals to, give us a little bit of our encouragement. And that encouragement actually gives, fuels our self-confidence so that we can kind of get out there and take a leap of faith to show it to a wider audience. Mm -hmm. I, I just love the feeling of being with other artists. And mm -hmm. to me, it doesn't matter uh, what art they're in. It just, it's a spirit that I feel. And I can become really encouraged uh, with my art just by, uh, experiencing somebody else's art. For sure. I mean, the best work I do is going to a theater and and watching artists on stage. I well, haven't been able to do that in quite some time, but I love to watch theater and I'm so inspired. And I always have a piece of paper and pen with me so that I can write down. And it might be something totally different than what's going on, but it's the inspiration that I get when I'm That's around. That's so true. That is, is so true. I, I just think that we um, we attract like-minded individuals, I think, uh, when you get to a certain age and stage in life. And it gives us the opportunity to not only be supportive, but to be supported. And I think that's really important in the exchange. Yes, it is. But what drives you with your 
businesses that you have and and what you do I mean do you wake up in the morning saying oh yippee I can't wait until I get to do this or do you um do you have a morning ritual you know that that's a really interesting question because over the years it certainly changed so when I first okay. started- way back in the early 90s, um, I was definitely inspired and had lots of vim and vigor every morning when I got up, you know, that new client relationship or, or coming up with a new marketing strategy was really something that fueled my energy. And then I found, um, I, and during that time frame, I had actually experienced corporate burnout a few times because uh-huh. we tend to be sometimes a little over exuberant with the time and effort we can put into things. And, you know, your body will, will give you some, some pretty significant signals that you need to slow down. So Mm -hmm. as a result of of kind of moving through those opportunities, I certainly now find that you do get into the morning ritual. So for me, I do my best thinking when I'm uh, exercising or doing some sort of physical activity like walking outdoors, right? So walking is part of my morning ritual. And I do that seven days a week, actually. Um, I do some sort of a walk in the morning I don't listen to any podcasts. I don't have any earbuds in. I just try to, you know, connect with the sounds of that I'm I'm feeling, whether I'm in nature on a trail or most often it's just in my uh, residential neighborhood. And I must admit, the um, the great ideas or the light bulb moments happen when in the silence, and you sort yes. of give yourself the opportunity to say, okay, so what are we going to do today? What's what's on the you know what's on the books? What's on the to do list? And before you know it, you start running through the strategy of what you'd like to accomplish for the day. And you may or may not get a a light bulb moment. So I certainly find that what fuels my energy now is not the same as what fueled my energy when I first started my business. But definitely um, the inspiration comes from those first few minutes in the morning where you can just be be in the moment and uh, give yourself an opportunity to get outside and enjoy some fresh air. Mm-hmm. I, and you're talking about walking and I'm thinking about my walking that I do it's so true, and I, right and I um I leave at the crack of dawn uh, because I, I live in the country and I'm I'm walking around five five miles a day mm-hmm. and I like to get out early because I don't have to worry about the traffic and so mm-hmm. it's a country road that I'm walking on mm-hmm. but I do mm-hmm. bring my cell phone with me yeah. uh, because you talk about those light bulb moments mm-hmm. and I have it I have my cell phone with me because I record if I get ideas when I'm walking I record it right then because there's no way I'm going to remember it in 45 minutes that's you know so I mean? true you know <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> like having the the diary or your journal by your bed right because some people get their light bulb moments when they're dreaming or when in that sort of slumber state and so they have to wake up when they wake up, they have to write it down. And then it, it once it's out of sight, out of mind, once they've got it on paper, then they come back to sleep. So that's a really great idea about taking your phone with you and then making a mental note to yourself um, about what the light bulb moment was so that you can do something about it when you get back to the office. That's a great idea. Mm-hmm. It's just to remember to um, to listen to them later. But uh, and I've been surprised uh, with listening to them later. And I was thank myself for recording it while I was while I was walking I don't have time to stop and text it I have to I have to actually record it yeah Um, so you say it's never too late to follow your passion so what do you mean by that Trish well you know I think that uh, I'll, I'll use myself as an example so when I started my first business in 1993 I had a marketing and communications company and um believe it or not at one point I had had uh, doing special events. So doing floral arrangements for special events was part of the the service offering that we had. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I no longer do that because, you know, business has changed and evolved. And I think you have to give yourself an opportunity. Your passions are going to change. I mean, I'm sure you'll agree you're not the same person that you were 10 years ago, five years ago, certainly not 20 years ago. No. So the, the folks who actually are able to maintain the same passion for a long period of time, I think are really rather gifted. Most of us uh, find different routes that we need to take or, or we find that we're, you know, our interest level changes or our experience level changes or even our customer base uh, gives us some great ideas and pushes us into a new direction, which is sh- certainly what happened to myself. So I I think it's never too late to follow your passion. You know, in my personal um, circumstances, I I loved doing art when I was a child and I kind of 
pushed it to a hobby state rather than bringing it to the forefront and making a business out of it. And so here I am, you know, 30 years later in a situation where I've decided, you know what, maybe I'm going to give that a whirl. I'm going to take that, the, the artistic talent that I've sort of um, used as a hobby and I'm going to bring it to the forefront and see what happens. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So I think that if you keep yourself open to the possibilities, you just never know where life is going to take you. And that's kind of the excitement that I'm experiencing at the moment and being able to take, you know, we've done some things even in the Invest in Yourself series where we've got a workshop where one of the gals uh, talks about kickstarting your side hustle. So maybe okay. I'm actually doing that, you know, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm taking, the, yeah, I'm taking her <laughs> advice um, and saying, okay, I'm going to kickstart my side hustle. I'm going to sort of say, all right, yeah, let's see what happens here. And and if it doesn't go anywhere, well, that's okay. At least when I get to a certain stage and age in my career, I'll go, well, at least I tried it. And uh, who knows what doors may open as a result of uh, giving it a more focus and attention. Oh, I know. And you don't, you do not want to leave anything on the table. You yeah. just want to do as much as you can. And because you don't want to have any regrets at all. No, exactly. And subscribe to something that's mediocre. For sure. So I really like that, a side hustle. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to get myself a side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and you, know, you just never know where that side hustle may lead you, right? Oh, exactly. Uh, that's right. The universe bows down to those that are uh, self-actualizing, step, stepping into uh, the essence of their being. And uh, it, it just, so many th opportunities open up. It's just, I'm dumbfounded by it I, I really am I'm just totally amazed by the more you do the more comes to you and it's just uh, fantastic you know what's really interesting and I'm sure you can relate to this too Rhonda because we both have uh, a podcast video podcast series mm -hmm. um, the folks that I have have certainly interviewed when they they actually smile when they tell me about a failure where they say, you know, oh, geez, I tried that. Gee, it was a disaster. But you yeah. know what? When I tried that, it opened the door to this. And that just took me in a whole different direction. And I think, mm -hmm. you know what? Congratulations to you for looking at uh, a failure as an opportunity. And I think, you know, when we're young, we're not afraid to try anything. You know, we think no. back, you know, uh, you know, skiing or bicycle riding or whatever. We're just, we're just not afraid. It. We have no fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we become an adult and we're like, oh, I don't think I want to try that. You know, what if I'm not very good at it? Well, who cares? What if you're not very good at it? It doesn't really matter. Um, but the fact that you tried it and at least you can say, I tried that and it wasn't for me rather than saying, oh no, I, I, I would never do that because, you know, I have a fear of failure. So I always look with that, with inspiration on the folks that certainly I've interviewed who have shared their failures and said, oh yeah, that definitely did not work. But as a result of doing that, look at where I am now because it opened the door to something else. Yeah, it's just brilliance, really. Mm -hmm. and, and, and taking the chance, I think, you know, um, as adults, we're just so apprehensive to step outside the comfort zone and try something new. Um, so I really applaud the folks who sort of say, yeah, well, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It, that's OK. Um, and like you say, you, you certainly don't want to get to the to the end of the road and feel that you've had some regrets along the way, because um, certainly it's all about giving it a try. And then um, and you look at who the people that we meet along the way. Oh, yes, that's right. Right. Um, it, you know, uh, trying different things takes a lot of courage and bravery. Mm -hmm. And you or and I are no different to anybody else in the listening audience. Um, mm -hmm. It takes us, we've had to have that courage and we've had to have that bravery to do what we do. Mm -hmm. And I hope that uh, they're totally inspired by you, Trish, because you. you have a lot of great, uh, great lessons to share. So Thank you're you. listening to the Rhonda Grant Show right now with my guest today, Trish uh, Tonai. How many people contact you, Trish? You know, uh, in, in the Share Your Story series, I can honestly say um, we have over 300 international features. And what I love to do is amplify you and your business. So you, thank you for participating in the guest blog series and then also participating in our video podcast because I know how hard it is to start a business and I want to applaud those folks who are interested in sharing their great ideas. And really the Share Your Stories online platform is all about that. 
So I'm really amazed, um, to be quite honest, at this, you know, this little, we'll call it the side hustle. Boy, I yes. to use that term. Uh -huh. um, you know, way back in 2019, I really wanted to shine the light on other entrepreneurs. And I started it with a guest blog. And then in 2020, we developed the website, uh, where, which houses all of the stories now. And of course, we're a lot more automated now than we were when I first started. And I, I actually counted up, I used to have seven touches, email touches with each entrepreneur that was sharing their story. And now that it's automated, it's, it gives us an opportunity to connect with folks in a totally different way. So um, thank you for asking for that, because it's really a wonderful platform, marketing platform to introduce new businesses and people who want to take that leap of faith to try something new. Exactly. Uh, that's wonderful. So what inspired you to create Share Your Stories Online? Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking. Um, when I uh, was on the speaker circuit uh, for my second book, uh, Breaking Barriers, 10 Entrepreneurial Women Share Their Stories, I was meeting some really awesome entrepreneurs. Obviously, yes. you know, people come up to you at the end, they want to have a chat with you. And of course, they started sharing their story because that's really what the Breaking Barriers book was all about. And I kept thinking, wow, how can I feature some of these really amazing people and be able to give them their, their uh, platform where they can really shine and introduce the person behind the logo? Um, so I did that with uh, the Share Your Story series, and it just sort of morphed and blossomed from there. Yeah, that that's just awesome. I, I love being a guest on on your show. It was Thank it you. was fabulous. Thank you. So what extraordinary experience have you had in your life? Oh, my goodness. There's so many, you know, there I are many. Kind of, yes, isn't that okay. true? Yeah, you it know, is. Every, everybody know. has many. I mean, you, we just look at, um, you know, when we first start out, um, the light bulb moments are certainly different um, and we build on our experience. And I would have to say that for me um, to move into this venture of uh, taking the artist to the from a hobby to the forefront, Yes. I can remember standing at my kitchen window and it was a dull, dreary day. And I thought, oh my gosh, it just looks terrible out there. And I thought, ah, oh, I had an idea. I went down to my studio, <laughs> just like that. Painting, <laughs> seriously, picked up a painting, walked outside, got a hammer and nails, and I literally hammered one of my pieces of art onto the fence. And I went back into my house and looked out the kitchen window and thought, wow, that looks a lot brighter than it did before. <laughs> and seriously, that's how the idea actually started. I thought, well, why Fantastic. can't I put art outside? And yes. so it was It was just one of those moments that um, I would have to say that was pretty extraordinary. Uh, I don't know many people who would take art from their studio and hammer it on the fence out in their backyard, but um, look at where but, it's taking me. Yeah, but it would last, though, because you, you, you're doing acrylic, right? Yes, yes, we're doing acrylic, and I've come up with a technique. So from, from that first initial, you know, hammering that piece of art onto my fence. And I thought, wow, maybe I'm onto something here. So I started gifting paintings to my friends and family. And they, um, they did some test marketing for me. And so four years later, here we are, I've managed to perfect a technique that now uh, allows the artwork to, to be outside so that you can enjoy a splash of color in your own personal space. Yes. Okay. Well, that is just wonderful, Trish. And it was a dreary day and you just... <laughs> I just went for it. I thought, what the heck have I got to lose, right? Yes, exactly. Do you feel that you've been guided or called for any... Not, it doesn't have to be art. It, it can be uh, entrepreneurship, anything. Do you feel that you've been guided on your mission? I think, you know, there's a lot of people along the way. One of the hashtags I started using was collaboration over competition. And I yes. think if we if we look at the people that we meet and the experiences that we have in life, everyone contributes something to our journey. And so maybe not so much um, a calling as I've really trusted my gut instinct and leaned into some of the people that I've met along the way, asked for help, um, you know, asked for their guidance ask for them to share some great ideas. And it's actually led me to the place where I find myself today. So I, I'm not sure if, it, if I would call it a calling, but I do believe that every single person that we meet has a journey and everyone has a story to share. And all of those stories are unique. And I think we touch other people because we're intended to meet them or make a contribution um, through them in some way. So 
I think that, um, you know, there's so many people on this planet that we will never get to meet. There's got to be a reason why we connect with the folks that we do. So I look at it more like serendipity. You know, we tend to cross paths with people for certain certain things and certain experiences. And we have to sort of look at those as opportunities. Mm -hmm. Just wonderful. That's just wonderful. I, I feel the same way, too you know I, I'm sometimes I feel how how is it that I met that person mm -hmm. you know it just seems like in all the people that are in the world and you've met that one person and it made such a difference in your life and maybe they're guardian maybe we've got guardian angels here on earth I mean they talk about that they certainly I, do they certainly hmm. do and I know with your extraordinary experiences you definitely have had a guardian angel or two step in and help you from time to time um, I've kept them busy. <laughs> you know, isn't that nice? And then that means that life is never boring if you've kept them busy for sure, right? Yes, and I think about that too. Um, and I, I don't know if my guests know this, the, uh, the people who follow me, um, but I did have a, <clears throat> an accident a few years ago, a T-bone. Um, I've had other accidents, but it is a miracle that I'm here. And I, I wasn't hurt. I didn't have a scratch on me. Right. I was released from the hospital after they made sure my neck and back and stuff wasn't broken. Um, but uh, and and so why why does why does that happen to some people and then other people have one accident and and uh, they don't survive it? Mm -hmm. I, I have no idea why that happens. But uh, so I feel that I've been gifted time, mm -hmm. and with the gifted time, I'm certainly keeping busy. And it sounds like you're really busy, too. Um, before we wrap up the show, Trish, I'm just wondering, is there anything else that you'd like to share uh, with our listening audience that we haven't talked about up until now? You know, I think, uh, Rhonda, I love the, the comment that you just mentioned is we've been that you've been given the gift of time. I think that we all have a finite amount of time that we have to uh, share our experiences and make our contributions in our communities. And I think if if we've learned anything uh, from our experiences, personal and professional, it's that the connections that we make really enrich who we are as people. And I think, um, you know, on my own uh, podcast series this morning, I I interviewed someone and she said that one of her three words of advice was to be kind. And I mm -hmm. think especially now in today's day and age, if we can walk away with anything, it's to try to be a little kinder, not only to ourselves, but to each other, because mm -hmm. I think ultimately that will make the world a better place. And uh, the people that we meet, hopefully we will leave them with a, a positive uh, memory of who we are and, and what we've contributed. So if I could just leave anything with your uh, listening audience, it would just be be kind because we never mm -hmm. know what's going on behind closed doors. And sometimes all it takes is a smile to, uh, I know I've certainly experienced that from other people. Um, just sometimes when someone smiles at you on the street, it can really make your day. So I think we, we were looking for the simple things in life. And I think that's a really um, wonderful way to make positive contributions in our community. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that you have uh, touched on that. Um, I, in my life, I've been shown time and time again, the person who seems to be the one that's uh, unapproachable is the one who's having the hardest time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we might read that differently, but we really need to be kind to everybody that we see because we don't know what people are going through and we don't know what our kindness and how far reaching our kindness can be in a person's life. So I really thank you for bringing that up. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to uh, meet with your network. And uh, I extend uh, the invitation if there's any entrepreneurs in your audience to by all means uh, share their story in our platform, shareyourstories.online. And uh, I thank you so much for the just the chance to, to chat and uh, spend some time. It's been wonderful. I look forward to doing it again. Oh, absolutely. We're, we'll, yeah. we'll have the we'll have an annual uh, opportunity in in my uh, business mentorship, keeping it real show. We're going to do um, uh, a revisit the the podcast in a year's time. So we'll definitely uh, touch base with you, Rhonda, in a year's time and hear all about how your journey has changed and what things um, have have come up in your life in the last year. 
Thank you so much, Trish. It was wonderful having you on the show. Thank you. Theme song coming up for the Rhonda Grant show, Sun on the Water, is composed and performed by my friend John Park Wheeler. This is Rhonda Grant with the Rhonda Grant Show, author of Magical Forces Within, Extraordinary Discoveries in an Ordinary Life, inviting you to look for the magical forces within yourself today and every day. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in to the Rhonda Grant Show with your host, Rhonda Grant. If you would like to find out more information about Rhonda and her upcoming guests and the work that she does, go to her website, rhondagrantauthor.com. That's rhondagrantauthor.com.